kind of like in school, you know? I'm doing the assignment. I'm just really doing the bare minimum to get by. Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Lizard's Library. I'm the lizard and I like to read and talk about books. This week, I thought I would hop on the train. Everyone's doing challenges this summer. It's been like the hot thing to do. And the hot thing that I've been doing this summer is like reading one book every month. So I am a little bit behind on my goal for the year. My year goal was to read 80 books and I currently stand at so I'm three books behind schedule. I've only read 48 books so far, which is like not that bad, but not that great. Obviously, like it's not a competition. The only person I'm competing with is myself, but myself last year read like 70. So I gotta beat her. I haven't been reading a whole lot because I've been traveling, I've been busy. I went to Europe, not to brag or anything. I fully took a whole book with me to Italy and I was planning on filming a reading vlog. And then I read 30 pages over the course of two weeks. So that was a very humbling experience. Experience. And here we are. This challenge is reading seven books in seven days. I don't know who started it. I've seen Allison Pages do it. I've seen Haley Pham do it. So if you're the creator, kudos. I didn't come up with this. I don't come up with anything. It is August 21st, Sunday. So I'm gonna try to challenge myself to read but like, I'm also not trying to like lose my sanity or sit myself into a reading slump. Like I want this to be manageable. It sounds kind of crazy, but also like I'm gonna do it the easiest way possible. That being said, seven books in seven days is still a lot. So we'll see. My room is a complete mess. You can take my word for it. I'm not gonna show you. I need to clean. I need to do some chores. So I've decided to start with an audiobook, which I feel like is the easiest way to do this. It's like maybe a cop out. So I went on my little Libby app and I was browsing in the audiobooks and I literally just went to my wish list and found the shortest audiobook that was also available. And that's on period. The Book Collectors by <laughs> I'm gonna start that audiobook and clean up my room. The Book Collectors, a band of Syrian rebels and the stories that carried them through a war by Delphine Minoui. a few hours i finished that book it's about the power of the written word and how books they provide opportunities for connection and community it was an interesting book it was different than what i normally would read but it was very short one book down it's day two i'm about to start reading well i started it last night i read the first chapter but i'm gonna keep reading zen and the art of writing by ray bradbury i bought this like a really long time ago there was a time in my life when i thought i was gonna be an author that time was like a few months ago. The reason I'm choosing it for this challenge though is because it's really little. It's less than 200 pages. It's by the author of Fahrenheit 451, which was like a good book, but I read. Thought I would just get some advice from the master. Maybe it'll inspire me to write the next great novel. So yeah, I read the first chapter last night and I don't know, this book is old. Yeah, it was published in the early 90s. So I don't know how relevant it'll be to me specifically. I was reading the first chapter and it was like, run to your typewriter right with gusto and i was like <laughs> okay bestie whatever you say omg i'm in this book that's me this is like kind of weird the way that it's written it's very intense and very dramatic he's basically just saying yeah i just had the most original idea ever and then i also had the courage to write it which isn't really advice probably won't read poetry every day of my life, but I love the sentiment. Okay, we're getting into some more actual like concrete tips. So far he has said, read a lot and use the five senses. Revolutionary concepts, truly. Am I being mean? We're just gonna sit right here because my hair is kind of greasy. Also look how cute this sweatshirt is. My friends got it for me from Nice Shirt Thanks. You send in a prompt and then they just design a sweatshirt for you or a t-shirt. It came out really cute. The prompt was she likes Harry Styles, Jane Austen, and making CDs. All true things. Don't look at my hair. Let's talk about this book. So yeah, it was like really interesting. I think Ray Bradbury is kind of interesting, kind of a weird dude. He writes all these weird science fiction stories. It says that it is practical tips on the art of writing from a master of the craft. So I was like, cool, I'm gonna get inspired. I have a lot of thoughts, not really positive ones. It was just kind of weird. I don't think I really gained anything from it. I mean, I would say that two of the chapters were giving advice or like writing tips. 
and the advice that he gave is very generic. Anyone taking like a first year writing class would probably learn the tips. It was like write every day, like just kind of basic stuff. And then the rest of it was just like a memoir slash bragging about everything that he's ever written and like how it got published and how he made money and all this stuff. Like he went into depth about every, like every single thing he wrote and how he got the idea for it. And I think he was like, this is great. This is like how to get ideas, but it wasn't. It was just like him and his weird ideas and his weird stories about babies getting revenge on their parents for being born. Which like, that sounds kind of cool and I want to read that story, but I didn't want to read about him writing the story, you know what I mean? So kind of a bust, but it was a really quick read. Successful day two, two books down, two days down. <laughs> raining again. It's been raining so much, but I guess that's a good reading day. Guess I can't go outside today. Oh well. Day three of this challenge and I am going to get the audiobook for In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Mikado. The audiobook's like five hours long, so again, short, doable. It is a autobiography about a relationship gone bad and a bold dissection of the mechanisms of psychological abuse. Sounds like a fun time. This rain is unrelenting, so I think I'm gonna have to go to the gym, unfortunately, as much as I hate it. I haven't worked out in like two weeks because it's just been raining, like nonstop, and I hate gym. I hate the gym. And then I also have to go to the grocery store. Grocery stores give me anxiety. Anyone else? Just me. So that's what is happening today. Book, exercise, grocery, and rain. Back secured. I don't know why the grocery store gives me so much anxiety. I took my AirPod in and I was listening to the audiobook, but I think I'm gonna have to like re-listen because I was just like, <laughs> um, maybe a psychologist should do a case study on me, but please don't. I don't know what that is, but it's a little concerning. I finished in the dream house and it was very depressing, but it was so good. It was very well written and definitely a really important story and I really enjoyed it. It made me want to read her other books. It was also kind of dark and heavy. So after finishing that, I just kind of watched Modern Family all night, but now it is day four. Yeah, it's day four. And I'm gonna start reading Happy Hour by Marlo Grinnell. I got it on my Kindle and she's like 170 pages so should not take too long and I'm really excited because I've been wanting to read it. Rain stop, praise the Lord. So I'm uh, gonna go take my grandfather's dog for a walk. I found this audiobook that's like literally three hours long. So of course I'm gonna listen to that because it's short. And like I said, we're just doing the bare minimum here. It's called Convenience Store Woman. It's by Sayaka Murata. It's about a woman who works in a convenience store in Japan. And it was originally written in Japanese and it's been translated. <laughs> that book it was very quick the audiobook was like three hours long but i usually listen to audiobooks at like 1.75 speed so it didn't take long to read it it was weird i liked it i think but also i don't really know if i got point it was about this woman she always like felt like an outcast like she was kind of weird when she's 18 starts working in a convenience store and then ends up working there for 18 years and everyone around her tells her that she needs to either get a real job or get married and become a mother because all that women can be in society is wives and mothers, right? And then she decides to marry this man to appease everybody. I liked, I mean, I enjoyed it, I think. There's that theme of like breaking societal standards, which I like. It was kind of a weird book though. You don't know how I feel. Good morning and happy Friday. I just showered so my hair's wet. It's not grease this time. I promise it's clean. Not to brag, but I am kind of crushing this challenge by reading books that take like two hours to read. Today, I'm gonna read Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin, which is just such a fun title. 
Relatable. I woke up to this notification. That's exciting. It's nine o'clock and I just finished reading my sixth book. The audiobook for I Kissed Cher Wheeler. It was really good. It's basically a gay paper towns. This high school senior, Cher Wheeler, is the popular girl. Everyone is obsessed with her. She kisses main character girl, like the night of prom, and then disappears and then leaves clues for them to come find her. So, like, it's literally paper towns, but it's not paper towns. I really liked it and I love paper towns. They're different books, but I do you see the comparison? Do you see where they. Anyway, I still have to finish reading. Everyone in this room will someday be dead. Should I talk about Cher Wheeler? What does one even like say about Cher Wheeler? A uh, cute little romance. I really liked also it's set in the south so it had some discussions about faith that I really liked that I thought were pretty interesting. I'm like tired. Those are my thoughts. And one book left. We shall see. I washed my face and got cozy. I'm gonna read I'm such a Kindle girl. I'm on page 138 out of 250, so halfway. The best part of having a Kindle is being able to read laying down comfortably without having to like awkwardly hold the book. Also, reading in the dark, game changer. All right, I finished all the books. A round of applause. For me. This was a lot of fun. It was pretty challenging, but I thought it was a very manageable challenge. Like I said at the beginning, I chose very short and pretty easy books to read. I'm just here to fill in some of the gaps. First, I'm just gonna talk about Happy Hour because I really loved it. I read this book because I'm Carly recommended it. I'll read anything that she recommends for good reason because this book was beautiful. It's another no plot, just vibe kind of book. And the vibe are immaculate. It follows some young 20-something girls in New York City who really more than anything just desire having fun. It's told from Issa's point of view through journal entries and I really felt like I was reading letters from a friend. My favorite part of going out is the stories that arise from it and the morning after powwow that you have with your friends in the living room and you're all a little hungover. You're just sipping your coffee, just kind of debriefing on the events of the night before. It's so fun and that is the vibe of this book. It's for the girlies and I loved it. And then next was Everyone in this Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin. Despite its pretty dark title was also hilarious. I was like laughing out loud, which is very rare that a book makes me laugh, but I thought it was so funny. Dark humor, my cup of tea. The main character is Gilda and she's a 20 something lesbian who is struggling with anxiety and depression. And at the beginning of the book, she gets into a car accident, which sends her into a spiral of thinking about death. She saw a flyer for free therapy. So she goes to this church and the pastor greets her thinking that she's there for a job interview and she doesn't say anything. She just gets the job on the spot. She then becomes involved in this web of lies that so easily could have been avoided, but because of her social anxiety, she just keeps digging herself further and further into this hole. I loved being inside of Gilda's mind, which is good because you spend a lot of time there. It's very introspective. So this one is for the overthinking and anxious girlies, but equally as fun. And both of those books were five stars and I loved them so much. If you enjoyed this little challenge vlog, check out the video where I switched screen time for reading. That was a fun time. And like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.